Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with my, I'm going to call it day one, day two uh, of the Path of Exile League. So this character has been played now for about 20 hours and we're in what, Trials of the Ancestors. I didn't really get to play as much as I wanted to. I know it's still a crazy amount of hours, but don't mind me. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and jump into a tier 11 map and kind of showcase the build for you guys, just to kind of show you where we are at. So I'm going to pop this open. After I run the map, I'm going to go ahead and talk about everything on my character. There will be a slight deviation or slight deviations naturally because uh, I don't follow my own POBs one for one. I like to kind of adapt based off of the economy or just based off of what I'm kind of interested in at the moment. Uh, I'll do this Cassia after. It's not really important. So far, I'm having a lot of fun. I actually really enjoy the league mechanic. I have to make a couple videos. I got to make one covering the league mechanic, and I have to make another one uh, going over uh, all the new tattoos that they showed, or at least the stuff that I saw just a little bit before uh, release. And here are the bosses. Oh boy, that was a rude hit. Actually, I think this is a pretty heavy damage modded map now that I look at it. This is, uh, what is it? Bonus damage is lightning with monster damage. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Those guys hit pretty hard. At least the golden does. Oh, this chilled ground sucks as well. This is like a terrible showcase, but that's all right. You can fix chill later, which is nice. Take off the shrines for you guys. I don't have my onslaught yet either. Oh, I can't wait. So many upgrades to come. Woo. I've been too busy doing Trial of the Ancestors, that's why. Must have done the lead mechanic for like five hours now. It's actually so much fun. The rewards may not be super great right away, but they're getting better. And overall, it's just a lot of fun and kind of a meme, but it's actually one that's good for party play, which is kind of cool. I didn't even notice the delirium there. Alright, so tooltip check, RF is rocking 234k, and fire trap is 221k. Alright, let's talk about that. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the gear, itemization, priority, a whole bunch of stuff, so get ready, I'm going to just spitball you info. In my weapon, I currently have frost shield with life tap, now this could be moved somewhere else to save links, but for now this is where it is, along with malevolence by itself. Remember, if you want to get malevolence set up, you have to go ahead and take the reservation via... Oh, actually, shit, you don't even need to take the reservation. Never mind, you can run Tempest Shield, Determination, and Malevolence with, I believe, just actually Sovereignty, from what it seems like. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so the weapon, I straight up just bought a plus one fire weapon for, like, two chaos, and then I crafted fire damage. Pretty poopy weapon. Not very, very good. Inquisitors don't have the best means of crafting an early weapon. Uh, and when I say Inquisitor, I more so mean Elemental Casters. That's why in the Juggernaut version, I use the Minion Crafting. You can also do that if you want to get a budget weapon. You can just come up here and snag Spiritual Aid and then Minion Craft a weapon and drop it later. Helmet, uh, dumped over a Divine into it. The base was like, I think, 30 Chaos, and then I spent about 12 Essence of Horror. Not really happy with my outcome. It got level 18 Burning, um, along with the 30% more Ellie, but other than that, it's pretty much useless. So pretty unhappy with this, but it's a big damage boost nonetheless. Uh, over here, I've got Fire Trap, Trap in Mine, Life Tap, and Combustion. Going to work on crafting a new helm. Over here, the Shaper Shield actually got really lucky. We one-tapped it. So, um, Champion Kite Shield is my favorite base. So, Champion Kite Shield on Shaper Base is unfortunately probably uh, probably a bit expensive. Um, if I look, they're about 80 Chaos to a Divine right now with my Awakened PoE trade. Uh, the reason I like this base is primarily because it has the highest block chance, which allows you to kit or block and spell block relatively easily. Now I'm 1% off both, but we can achieve that. Uh, you can also go ahead and you see where it says Searing Exarch Lesser Implicit there. You can actually get block chance there to get a little bit more block if you're not using a champion kite shield. So that's another option for you. Um, the way I crafted it was with Pristine Life Fossils. Uh, pristine Life Fossils give you like the highest chance of hitting the life modifiers while also potentially giving like life regen and life. So in a trade league environment, that is absolutely the way to go. Here we've got Tempest Shield, Frost Blink, and Determination. Now my amulet, I just picked up off the floor and uh, kind of clicked Reforge Chaos on it one time, and we just have a Life Res amulet. 
Uh, what's important to note is the Arsonist Anoint on here. It's very cheap. You can find it located right over here. And if you hold Alt, you can see that it is green, green, blue. Okay, moving on to the rings. This ring is just quite literally resistances with life with a little bit of ES. This one I bought off of trade for 5C. Uh, it has a minimum frenzy along with chaos res. The minimum frenzy means you can drop blood rage so you don't put an extra degen on yourself. As Inquisitor, we get affected by blood rage even more because it brains our energy shield and our life pool. Um, so this is a very good ring, not mandatory by any means, but very good. Uh, over onto the gloves, I've got increased life regeneration rate. Life regeneration rate is like prime, very important for the build. Um, so life regeneration rate decks, life regeneration rate, dual res, etc. Very, very, very strong. A lot of these pieces don't matter too much if they are armor or armor ES. The shield, I'll make an exception and say it makes a big difference. Uh, it makes a big difference primarily because you actually take nodes on the tree to scale shield defenses. So you want to make sure that that itself is armor ES. Now, moving on a little bit more to the gloves. Um, whenever you're unveiling your gear with Jun in the early league, if you happen to get plus two area gems, you can actually slap your fire trap or your RF on early for the initial plus two before your six link, or you can put your auras in there for bonus armor. Now here we've got like faster attacks, flammability, shield charge, and life tap. Over on my boots, I bought Legacy of Fury for two divines. They're now down to about 1.8. Uh, these are one of the biggest things I prioritize because they give so much clear for your character. So over here I've got Life Tap, Ink AoE, Infernal Cry, Molten Shell. The only reason for Ink AoE, which I'll be dropping, was for Expeditions. Because of the new Expedition node where you spawn basically one Dynamite and blow everything up, the Infernal Cry works out really well. Do note that if you want to farm that stuff, there's nothing wrong with coming down and grabbing Call to Arms so your Infernal Cry is instant so you don't die instantly. But with Legacy of Fury, you can just pop a Phasing Flask and run in a circle and all the mobs kind of die. Okay. Um, moving on a little bit further, Replica Soul Tether. Now, probably an interesting choice. I don't have this in the build guide, but I talked about it in the video. Now, Replica Soul Tether is up to 1.3 Divine. I probably would not go for it anymore. It might be better to go for a Legion Jewel with Corrupted Soul. The purpose of the Replica Soul Tether is the following. If I take it off, I lose 1,100 ES. This Replica Soul Tether, paired with the Corrupted Soul that it provides, gives a very nice buffer to your energy shield. What this means is when you are taking incoming damage, it splits 50% and that 50% hits your life, but the 50% that hits your life can also be blocked and then recovered. So rather than your ES just depleting and then your life bouncing, this allows your ES to sustain a bit and your life kind of bounces. But again, at the current prices, I would probably leave it alone. You can aim for Corrupted Soul or you can just stick to kind of how you are. It really depends on how expensive Aegis Aurora is because when you go Aegis Aurora, you drop Corrupted Soul because they do not synergize. Okay, talking about the body armor. I bought my body armor for 21 Chaos. I bought the divination card Emperor of Purity. There are seven of them, and it was 3C each. So 7, 14, 21, 20. 7, 14, 21. Yeah, there we go. 21C. Uh, my body armor is very poo poo right now. It just has Chaos Res, Life Regen, Cold Res, Life. So I plan on recrafting this. I'm probably going to recraft with Chaos Essences to secure my Chaos Resistance and hope I get some level of armor because I mean it literally gives nothing right now it doesn't even give 400 armor so this is like one of my weakest points here I also really want to get the Gravicious mod for physical damage taken as X element because that adds a lot of physical mitigation so over here I've got efficacy burning damage life tap righteous fire swift affliction and Ellie focus for the newer players remember in the build guide you need to run life tap or else you cannot use your swift affliction so if you look here at the green uh, the green R right if I take off life tap, that goes away. You got to have life tap to use Swift Affliction. Why? You're going to have to ask GGG. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. All right, so going on a little bit further, if you don't want to use efficacy, you can absolutely use Ink AoE instead. That is also totally fine. As for the skill tree, I'm going to go ahead and flash it open. Everything should seem pretty fine. I do have a couple of tattoos on my character. They're kind of situational. So since I'm using Replica Soul Tether and not an Immortal Flesh, I have lost a lot of net life regeneration. So I've slapped on three tattoos here to get some more life regen. So that's 45 life regen. I slapped on this tattoo for some chaos res. And then I have a tattoo down here for uh, lightning res because when I did this swap, I was very tight on my resistances and I like to be overcapped because of multiple sources that can like pull your resistances down. Anyway, that's pretty much about it for the update. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you ever want to pull this character real time, open up POB and you can type in my character name or just type in Pox and import, and then you can pull this character. So without further ado, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you have a question, feel free to check out the Righteous Fire Wikipedia that you can find in the comments linked below. You can also ask in the chat, but we're kind of getting slammed right now. So I'll do my best to answer, but just know that 
We're only human and we're trying our best. Thanks so much everyone for watching. If you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. I've already said that twice. See you guys later.